Okay, I'm going to call the meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals to order for Monday, August 12th. This case, uh, this hearing, and our meeting is recorded uh, by vote of the town meeting. We um, record the meeting and then it's given to Whitman Hanson Community Access to put on their website. So, our uh, first case, case number 15, 28 Forest Street. Type of district, residence A1, type of structure, existing dwelling and garage, proposed in-law unit. Owner's name, Randy and Julia Nan Nan Nanagian? Nanagian. Nanagian. Okay. It's, uh, it's written correctly, though. Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. We got something right. Uh, Nanagian, 28 Forest Street. When did you acquire this property? June 28, 2016. Has application been filed with town clerk? Yes. Has any previous appeal been made? No. Sections of bylaw of which relief is requested, section 240-6.6, special permit, and section 240-6.5, side setback variance. Reason for asking relief, applicant wishes to construct an accessory unit attached to the existing dwelling and garage. Ex existing structures precede zoning. The new addition will require a side setback variance. This case was advertised in the Whitman Hanson Express on July 25th and August 1st. Sitting on the case will be Mr. Keeman, Mr. Andrews, Mr. Curran, Mr. Flaws, and myself, John Goldbrose. And this time we'll have the reading of the list of abutters. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh, the following is a list. The following is an abutters list using the requirements of the State Zoning Act parties in interest for the property located at 28 Forest Avenue, Forest Street, Whitman, Mass. 02382. Enterprise Rent a Car of Boston, Sugartown Investors, Larissa da, Sil da Silvera Rodriguez, Giovanna Cardoza, Caroline. De Novas Moscato, Alan and Sandra Burns, William and Paula Murray, Colin O'Shaughnessy, Early Pickard, Sean and Jill Kane, Heidi Beckley, Kirby Family Realty Trust, James H. Kirby and Pamela J. Kirby, Angie Mukati, Richard Mukati, Katalele Ilunga, Nathan Kumu, Catherine Roden, Alan and Elizabeth Kumu. Thank you, Mr. Gloss. Um, okay. Okay, we ask uh, everybody who's attending and participating in this uh, hearing to uh, Raise your right hand and take an oath so that uh, the testimony you give is part of the hearing. Do you solemnly swear the evidence you shall give in this matter shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Okay. Um, who are the applicants? Uh, yes. So, um, Mr. Andrews has called to my attention that there was a mistake in the time of the meeting. Uh, for printing for the printed ad in the newspaper, the printed ad stated that the meeting would be the hearing would be at eight o'clock, but the notice that went out to all the abutters said seven o'clock. And just for the record, the notice we submitted to the newspaper said seven o'clock. Um, I bring this up because the only potential problem this could raise is, I mean, obviously the abutters are all on notice that this was at seven o'clock and clearly some of you have <laughs> responded to that. It is conceivable that somebody might appeal our decision and say, I thought the hearing was at eight o'clock. That's why I wasn't there. So, you know, I would, I would give you the option if you wish that we, we continue the hearing or hold it off till eight o'clock. But frankly, I, I think I that- think we can continue and if somebody mentioned something we could you know. Yeah. Okay. So I, I just raise that it. it's only. So we'll go ahead with the hearing then. I just want to make sure you're aware because it's yeah. frankly more of a problem for you potentially than for anybody else. Sure. Um, 
So, uh, with that being said, uh, the procedure we'll follow is we're going to ask the applicant to explain what they want to do. Uh, we'll then read into the record uh, letters from town boards. We'll have questions and comments from members of the board, and then we'll go out to the public for your questions and comments. So, the um, floor is yours. Just explain to us what's there now and what the changes are you're going to make and, and so forth. So, um, well, right now we have a porch between our house and the garage. Um, so we would be taking down the porch that we have and putting the ADU there. And Peter can talk more about <laughs> exactly. Oh, the construction. Okay. Um, so presently the garage is a detached garage. Yes. Okay. So you're going to kind of, as I see it, mm -hmm. uh, take down steps in a deck area, kind of fill that in and attach everything together. Okay. And uh, yes, I, I gather you're the builder, or yeah. yeah, can you give us your name and <laughs> pretty much what they want to do? Uh, can, can you can we have your name for the My name's Peter Lynch? Okay, okay, uh, pretty much what they want to do is tear down the deck that's existing and replace it with a rough, approximately 24 by 29 addition that will be a, basically a housing unit for a mother in law unit. Uh, it will connect the house to the garage. Um, it's going to be one story. Um, problem being is it's not going to be 15 feet off the sideline. Uh, the garage currently is seven feet off the sideline and it's going to maintain the same sideline as the garage. Okay. And that's on Heidi's side. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And describe what the existing house is, how many stories, how many rooms and uh, there's two floors. Uh, we have a finished basement, which is where mom is right now. Very little <laughs> natural light. Um, and there's uh, three bedrooms. Um, what else did you want to know? Um, <laughs> okay, so it's and the and what will be in the you said the addition will be one story. The garage and, is did, two stories. Oh, so okay. the addition is actually smaller than both the house and the garage. Okay. Um, how do you how do you access the, the garage. garage? Yeah, is so, there a door in the back of the garage? Yeah, it's, you can actually the end of Hancock Street, you can drive straight oh. into the, we don't keep cars or anything in there. Yeah. It's you know like it's storage. storage. And in the winter, it would be possible. So the snow, right, the snow the dead is like in there. Pushed into our. So we uh, don't. Which is fine. We use it mostly for storage. There is access to the second floor of the garage from the porch. So that's a separate room up top there. And that's going to change. Yeah. yeah so how. It's just unfinished. There's nothing there. So how will you access that second floor once you put this addition on? Yeah, I can. Yeah. <laughs> so what, do, do you, you don't happen to have any drawings? Or? I do have a drawing, but I don't know how quick it's going to be for you. Yeah, I, anything will help. <laughs> that I can at least show to the... Uh, and that was... It's not bad. Apparently. <laughs> I was... I was... I was expect. Oh my gosh! I was expecting a little hand handmade sketch when you when you introduce it that way. Um, okay, so the first, so, and I'll I'll pass this down after I've looked at this. This is a sketch just of the addition and and the existing garage. I see. Um, yeah. Okay, and then. Uh, <laughs> All right, let me, uh, I'm going to pass this along. So the, okay. the the addition will have living room, bedroom, bath, kitchen, and you show a sunroom. Is that okay? And currently, the access to get into the second floor of the barn, facing the barn to be on the left side, this is a set of stairs that goes up to it. Uh, folks, uh, Wayne and Bob, please. He's explaining to us how to get to the Once second floor. The addition is put on. There'll be the the stairway will be moved to within the apartment. That okay. Built. So you'll be able to go directly from the apartment into the barn. Okay. 
and, I mean, and that other door will be blocked off. Okay. And so you 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 have well like a, a driveway from here to the end of Hancock Street to the back of your grass. Yeah. grass. Right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. But in any event, you're not losing. No. Uh, you know, you, you don't normally drive into there. And you're also showing a driveway expansion. What what do you have paved now? Uh, just like. Yeah, the, you could fit probably four cars easily in our driveway. Mm-hmm. But you're putting a little bit more in to make sure you could have the two, so it's too deep. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um. So her entrance would be from the driveway, where ours is sort of to the left of the driveway. And then also from the sunroom. Yeah. yeah. Will the sunroom on that addition be part of? Per unit then, or part of the main Connecting. house? Okay. Yeah, so okay. So there'll be an access to the addition to the in-law apartment through your house, through the main house. Mm-hmm. And then there's an additional, what, what other entrance is there to the in-law? The right off of the driveway. Okay. Like straight ahead. So it's set back from where our entrance is, our entrance is forward off of the porch to the left and this would be back more. Okay. And the existing deck to the left hand side of your house that remains. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay, anything further you want to explain before we? Uh, I don't think so. Okay, well, I'm sure the board will have questions. Okay, let me uh, read into the record letters from town boards. From Whitman Fire Rescue and Emergency Services. At this time, Whitman Fire Rescue and Emergency Services has no objection to this proposal for an accessory unit to the existing dwelling provided all applicable fire and building codes are met. Sincerely, Timothy Clancy, Chief. From the uh, Planning Board, due to the Planning Board's summer meeting schedule, we were not able to view the application for 28 Forest Street before your meeting. Due to these circumstances, the Planning Board does not have a recommendation for this property. Adam Somerville, Chairman. And that's all that we have. Um, the one observation, and I talked to the building inspector who could not be here tonight. He didn't have any issues with it. But the one observation I would make is that um, by attaching, by making this all one building and attaching the garage, so at that point the garage is part of the house. So I think the the variance needs to be, in, instead of it being subject to accessory building requirements, it's now part of the whole house. So I think the variance will need to make it, if we grant the variance, we need to make it clear that it applies to the uh, the garage, which is, you said, seven feet at its closest point. So, but you're not, otherwise you're not changing. Are you going to rebuild or do anything with the garage and all? Okay. All right, let me go to the board for your questions and comments, Mr. Keeman. Hey, Mr. Chair. Um, on this plan here, we show in the living room. And on this, hey, it looks like it's two foot six from the end of the first house to the edge of the, the addition. Correct. Yeah. But on this yeah. plan here, you show from the edge of the house mm-hmm. to the end, seven feet ten. Right. Which is it? And that it's going to be probably somewhere in between there. And it's all, oh, it came when I went to see Mr. Garvey about the, um, the uh, how far we could be off. So uh, that's what he came up with. It's going to be somewhere in between there. Um, I have to make it so that I can get a three-foot doorway in there. So I'm guessing what I'm going to end up doing is it'll probably be somewhere around three feet off the edge of the house, but I'll have to diagonal the door, put a kitty corner door in there, mm-hmm. made myself an overhang on top of it. So you're not going to change that, that line between the addition and the garage? The garage is going to say permanent. You're going to adjust the door to, right. to fit in there? Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's all I have, Mr. Okay. Uh, Mr. Andrews? Yeah. Um, where do you have the door to the garage? Um, oh, 
the door, well... When you, when you come in from Hancock Street, you see the garage door. There's a big overhead. And then to the right, oh, facing the street, is another that, door. Is that this two-story building, or is it the proposed addition? That's the, the garage that currently exists. You can get into the main, the bottom part by the overhead door, and there's a small door there. But the upstairs of the garage, you access off of the porch, and it goes up, and that's the one that will be changing when the addition is put on. So, where, where the garage is now, that's going to be incorporated. Well, it's it's still going to be a garage. It's just that the access to it will be changed. Instead of being going up to a second floor door, it'll go straight out of the back hallway up my unit and no, so the, 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 the interior door. It won't be used as a garage then, is that right? It, 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 well, it's, well, it's, it's, it's just storage. But yeah, yeah. But, but we don't put cars in there. <laughs> because there's no driveway. There's lawn furniture and yeah. <laughs> bicycles. But the, the, there's no problem getting to it coming down here, for instance. Um, no. Because I, I took a ride over there the other day. You, you, you know, you it's just grass. Yeah. yeah. So it's shorter grass and then yeah. back to the garage. Mud. So <laughs> that, will that stay as a garage or is it going to be part of the No, that's, that's still going to be a garage, not, not part of her house. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's all I have. Okay. Uh, Mr. Karn? Yes. Um, Nice to see you guys tonight. Uh, I have a few questions. I don't understand why the addition can't be flushed with the right side of the house. So in other words, you lined it up with the garage. There's got to be a wall that's at an angle anyway. So if you lined it up straight back with the house, you could get a door to the on the side of that addition, right? I, I could. I could. You know, the, what we're trying to do is leave enough space so that um, it doesn't interfere with their kitchen. Um, they have an entrance and a kitchen window, and I'm trying to basically compromise between the two so that there's a, a So you're saying in. there's a kitchen window in the existing house, the existing that, house that you're yes. worried about? Yes. Is that what the sink is? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, it just, what's odd for this is that you're going to put a, a living space addition up to an accessory structure. So the accessory structure, although, although it's too close to the property line, um, is only going to be 10 feet. That's in our bylaw. But realistically, the urine A1 is supposed to be a 20 foot side setback, but this two foot six, 2.67 feet isn't enough for a door. So do you have to go further over? I'm hoping that I don't. I'm hoping that if I. So if you have to build an angled door, that's not going to be easy. It's going to be harder than the steps. And well, that's something you have to deal with, but um, it just seems like if you had gone right to the right side of the house, straight back, and maybe keep a five foot separation for the garage, but elevation wise, the finished floor is gonna match the finished floor in the existing house. Yes. So that's gonna make a lot of foundation out of the ground there. I mean, doesn't that lot go straight, goes downhill quite a bit? No. No, not that much. No, it's quite a little back there. Yeah. Because it doesn't have a little bit. Well, not, well, yeah, it is angled down into the left of the property. If you're on Fourth Street, yeah, I, I wouldn't have a problem with on the right side if it was flush. Um, but I can see the problem with the kitchen window, mm -hmm. and that's going to be looking into the first sunroom. Yes. The door goes into the, the door. Room. Yeah, the door. So the there. kitchen window where it is right now. Hopefully, is that still be able to so see? Is, is that where the addition is not going to happen? Is Correct. that where that kitchen is? Yeah, yeah, the kitchen is sort of like the window's on the corner. Yeah. And then there's a door <coughs> off of the kitchen to the back porch. So high up, how high off the ground is the um, the back of the house from the deck to the ground? Is it three feet, five feet? Oh, that's more than that. It's about the size. Deck to the ground. It's going to build a foundation under it, so. Yeah. Um, about four feet. It's, yeah, if you go under the deck, you have to bend. Yeah, so. Yeah. So the deck. So the deck is about this high? 
at one point. It, it's yeah. it's multi level. Yeah. <laughs> we just want to get it up and, and yeah. even everything out. But uh, yeah, because when you turn the water on for the hose, yeah, yeah. yes, sir. Yeah. So yeah. will you will you connect to the existing detached garage when you connect to that? How is that going to work? Are you going to come in? You're going to have to build stairs to go up or down? The interior. Yeah. So they would go down into... One to flight going down, one flight going up. So, yeah. So it's a big space. So. <coughs> That's all I have. Okay. Uh, Mr. Blum? Um, right now you've got a three-bedroom... And that uh, that required what three parking spaces, Sean, or three plus? Three point three. I, I don't know. We I think we really just consider it as for a single family house. And Bob, Bob, yeah, yeah, I don't think we regulate that. I think yeah. If they add the equivalent to one space, I, and I think they kind of show that. Yeah, I just want to make sure. Okay, that's a driver. Yeah, so, they should be okay. So yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, I, I I would agree that. With the addition of an in-law, they, well, they certainly need three spaces and ought to have four, and they're going to have four with the addition of the expansion of the garage, of the driveway. So, is there any parking allowed on the street? We don't park on the street. People do because it's by the school, it's, but we don't park on. The street. And, and isn't it parking limited during school? Drop off hours. I don't think it's supposed to be. <laughs> <laughs> I used to live nearby. So yeah. I, yeah. 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 So it's not realistically no. Right. It's not smart to park on the street. You yeah. lose your side mirror. <laughs> I, I realize this is a um, accessory or in law or whatever mm -hmm. you want to call it, but it just seems more like it's just a big addition to. A house. Um, it, it is. It's a separate kitchen. So it does have a separate, right? A separate. Yeah, and it'll be a small apartment. That's yeah. kind of why our connection, yeah. like from, is going to be the three season porch, so that you know that's kind of how just like her old house. She had a three season porch. Mm -hmm. We'd have dinners mm -hmm. out there in the summer, mm -hmm. and we wanted to have that like connection there. So the existing deck. That wraps around, and yep. both way around. both of you will use and be able to use it. Yeah. So, and the it looks like the square footage of the addition would be seven hundred and twenty feet, but part of that is actually the sunroom is actually going to shared. belong or you know, be shared. Uh, so well, that was going to be my other question: Is there do we do we have a limitation to, as far as um, how big that can be? No, that no. Be. And remember, the existing house is two story, so yeah. so it's not it's so not we're only adding maybe generally if it's under nine hundred. Yeah, under nine hundred. Okay. Some adding something less than a third. Yeah, it just uh, a one zoning district with only sixty six feet of frontage. That's rather I'll call it unusual. That's a little pre existing there. <laughs> We don't, we don't run into that too often. Um, but then I'm looking at your neighbor that's in A1 and they're only 46 feet in front of you. <laughs> well, I don't have any other questions. Okay. Um, I guess what, will there be any um, basement to the addition? Yes. Okay, to the addition. Yes. Is that going to connect to the basement in the existing house? Or? No. No, okay. And so, what will what will that basement? Uh, what I'm hoping to do is to get into the garage, the existing garage. I want to go at the have a corner off our kitchen that'll open up and go into a landing, and you take a couple steps up to the the top floor, a couple steps down to the, the garage side, and then cut an opening in from the garage side, so I get into the access to the basement. Yes. From the garage side, oh, okay, yes. okay, and will, will that just be? So you go outside into the well, the old garage, into the garage, the garage. Yeah. and then down. So that way, yeah. But, but will that be like a second access? Her main access would be off of the front right. garage. Um, 
But will the basement be unfinished, just for storage? What, uh, storage, storage, basically okay. storage. Enough storage. Access to utilities. Okay, all right. Um, there will be fire separation between the dwelling and um, the yeah, existing garage. Fire garage. Fire requires. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, so the other question I guess I have is why, why connect? And grant, I understand putting the addition on but why connect it to the garage? Well, seems because to... it's storage, and so I have a very small place. And right now, everything I own is stuck yeah. in, the, in the garage. And at some point, they'll just make sure I have a place where all of seats and stuff is in there. And I don't have to go outside and down a big flight of stairs to get to it. Just a yeah. you know, half flight into the garage. Okay. But it's not. It's a, a storage place for the whole family. Yeah. Yeah. It just seems like that creates work to make the connections and everything, whereas if you just left, you, you know, if the addition were just, you know, a couple feet short or whatever, and you didn't connect it to the garage, it seems like that would simplify the construction. Well, we also but still have ten, to be able to get feet. upstairs. Excuse me? They'd be 10 feet between the existing garage. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and that's okay. a lot of space. We yeah. have a... Um, Structural engineer look at the garage to make sure that it was safe. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. all that mix well build up against it and get every square inch. Okay. That you can. All right. Okay. Well, I'll be interested to see what the neighbors. It just it complicates it slightly from the zoning point of view, but given the kind of existing layout of the lot, I mean, it's not a small lot, it's just that because of the way the existing house is and the existing garage, you can't take advantage, you can't tilt it the other way to the left-hand side of the lot where you have more space in the lot. Okay, can I just have your name again for the record? Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, I'm going to go out to the public. If you wish to speak in this, please raise your hand and give us your name and address and ask questions or tell us what you think of this proposal. Anybody? <laughs> Pro con. <laughs> if the neighbor, if the neighbors on each side are here, we'd really like to hear from them just to confirm it's okay with you. If it's okay with you, but any. Uh, um, Heidi is not here. She said she couldn't make it. She's yeah. the one on the closer side. Yeah. And uh, Collins, the kings, <laughs> the kings couldn't make it. Okay. All right. Uh, <laughs> Uh, can you just uh, tell us what what Heidi Beckley had to say about it, just so we... We've been talking to her all along, like just keeping her up to date okay. as what's moving on. She's she's great. She says they was a great neighbor, and she yep. said, I'm going to be there. <laughs> so. um, what, what do you... What do you uh, it looks like there's a fence on Heidi Beckley's property. Yes. Is, okay. Yep. And that runs all the way down to where the addition was going to be. Yeah. Okay. And she's actually a little excited because there's some annoying trees that we can't get at between our fence and the garage. So we'll be able to get rid of all that. Okay. <laughs> all right. Okay. And she's the one who would be most affected. Yeah. Um, I'll note since the addition's one story, you know, sometimes if somebody's proposing a two story addition, now we yeah. I'd be asking questions about. Uh, their windows overlooking the property and all that, but since it's one story, I don't see a problem with that. Okay, anybody else want to say anything on this? Okay. Um, anything further from the board? So, so we're just looking at a side setback and special permit. Special permit for the in-law and side setback variance, which I think needs to be applied to the um, garage as well as the addition. Um, and yeah, it would, and it would be a variance because they're not just intensifying, and they're actually creating a new, a new nonconformity because of uh, including the garage in it. Um, so that's yeah, that's what we're looking for. All right, can um, I? I have another question. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, what would be the harm in going instead of going square to the garage or the barn, going square to the house? So you know, it's that right hand side go out that two point six seven feet. If, if but, I if I do that, which I which I could do. Well, you you're gonna have it's gonna be at an angle anyway somewhere. But if you kept it square to the house, that would make that easier, right? 
it would accept that it's going to interfere with her kitchen window. It wouldn't, wasn't. because that dimension, 24 feet, will remain the same. Right, but right now that 24 feet, including the extra, gives us to the door. So she can get out the door and... Yeah, but I don't see how... In other words, the addition right now is skewed this way. Why not just bring it back straight? You're not going to hit that corner of the garage. And you're not able to do that. I, I can do that, but I'm going to have to narrow the house down. Why? Be, be, in order to be able to, to keep her window, so she can look out the kitchen window when she's... You, can you show me on this plane? Uh, you, you don't mind? Yeah, yeah. Good. Go on ahead. Um, if, you, if you keep this corner where it is, come over 24 feet, that's still right here. Now bring this square back parallel to this side of the house. And you'll end up here. What's the problem with that? Okay, but if this moves over... No, it's not going to move. Keep this where it is. Yeah. And go parallel to the side of the house. It goes this way. You come in a little bit on this garage. This looks better. Everything about it, but you just shrunk this down. No, we didn't. This is going to stay the same. This is going to stay the same. This is going to go this way. And over here. And this is coming this way. In other words, this is still 24 feet here, 24 feet here. This is still 30. So you, you would like angle it a little bit? Let's favor the, the, the existing so house. So instead of the garage, so instead of going here, you go into the house. Yeah, I, yeah, and I think that that would look a whole lot better. So keep this 2.67 feet. Keep this 5.03 feet. Take the building in more feet over here. My house. <laughs> you're going to gain, you're gonna gain some. I mean, would that bring the corner of the house mm -hmm. inside? Or? This, both of these walls are, 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 this, are this wall at an angle. This wall, right yeah. now, if he goes square to this, this house, mm -hmm. then he's only got an angle to deal with out here. Right, but but the corner yeah. of the house wouldn't be here. Right. It'd be, it'd be, it'd be in, it'd be smaller than it would be in probably three or four feet. Which is a lot when you're talking You're not going to lose it. You're still going to have access to the garage. What I'm saying is this, this will be out here. here. Yeah. You're going to still be 24 by 30. Uh, it just makes more sense. Mm -hmm. it, just when you, it makes it easier for you. To You're just moving it all over the floor. It's just taking this addition and doing this. Yeah. You keep them the same size. Right now, you, you went to this corner of the, of the garage. Mm -hmm. That doesn't need to happen. Then once you go square, you're going to only deal with the angle right here. Right now, you'll deal with the angle here and here. So right now we have the porch that you see. So let's let's just say we want to get rid of this bar, mm -hmm. the garage, right. right? And then you wanted to put this addition on. It would be moved over this way, right? Because you want it square to this. I don't want it square to Well, you, there's no reason <laughs> for it not to be. See, if you make it parallel to this right side of the house, mm -hmm. that brings a line right here. Right now, it's skewed. You see that? And if if you still keep the same dimensions, it doesn't affect. It's going to make it easier for the builder. So, in other words, you're still going to have access to, to the barn and the garage, yeah. but you're going to not going to have four feet here. Your wall is going to end right here. Okay. And how far is this wall going to go? Well, I think the board probably should discuss that, but. Well, then, I mean, yeah, that's you're it. changing the whole thing. If you can give me more room on the side, you'll be willing to do that. Okay, I'd be willing to, to do Well, that. even four feet isn't a lot if you're going to put a three foot door. Right. No. I don't really. They want, however, they want to build it. Yeah, I. They want I, their four feet. They want I, seven feet on your stem. I, think, I mean, I think it's a good suggestion, but I'm, I think <laughs> maybe necessary? what we should do. Yeah. is craft a decision that allows them to go either way. So if they take up your suggestion that they're covered, if they want to leave it the way it is, they're covered. I'm fine with that. I just That's, think yeah. I, I think you're making he's, a good he's, suggestion. He's a builder. <laughs> yeah, and former building inspector. So um, so he's, I think, offering helpful advice. Yeah. 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 So we'll, we'll just phrase the decision to make it clear that the current building inspector that if they, if they want to shift it a bit and that's what you're talking about is like shifting a little bit to the front building yeah which I mean makes sense to me but um, 
And as long as we are giving the variance for the garage, and at its closest point, the garage, the, the rear eight corner foot is 8 foot 11, right? At, according to Carl Garvey's. So if we say they can uh, go as close as 8 foot 11 for the addition, you know, it, if they swing it one way or another and it's a couple of feet closer to the right, then that's, they're covered that way as long as we put that in the decision. You know, I'll, 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 I would craft the decision to make it clear that an alternative Not was suggested. Not increase the side, yeah. the existing side setback of 8.11 feet. Right. Well, that, that gives him an additional six feet. So that 2.67 could become 8.6. Yeah, that, then he could easily put a door in there. Are you right? okay with that? I am. I, you know, I don't... Uh, I am. I, I, <laughs> well, I, I'm not... Actually, I kind of opposed to that. I think we give him five feet there. Okay. That's more than... Yeah, I'm yeah, but enough that he could make the change that you... Let me make sure I'm... Because all I could do is listen to you talk in my entrance. You were suggesting... So if he... Yeah, okay. Yeah, so if he comes out here and goes squirt, keep the yeah, yeah. after this, then whatever happens here, this is the... You don't have to worry about that. Yeah. This is what should be parallel and square. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So he go a little further over, and, and which would make it easy to put in the door. Right? Yeah. 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 It's going to make them easy to build. Easy yeah. to build. Yeah. yeah. Um, so if we give you five feet there, yeah, five feet five. Yeah. And then you go square to the house. Mm -hmm. And wherever it hits at the garage, yeah. it hits. Yes, exactly. And you're going to have a crooked wall there anyway. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If one book, the honest truth, when we were doing this, the original plan was what you're proposing. And when I gave it to Mr. Garvey to draw up, he said, let's keep the line straight to the garage. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a survey. That's a survey versus a builder, huh? I say you paid the main house now. That's what I'm asking. Yeah, I mean, I can understand how, okay, that may look better. And that's why I want to leave it. Either option open because maybe you know may look better that way. I you know I don't think it matters that much in terms of visibility from the street or anything like that. Okay, can we close the hearing then with that? Yeah. So the request is for a special permit for the in-law apartment uh, side side sideline variance um, for the. Garage, which is as close as eight, currently eight feet eleven, eight, just over eight feet, as shown on the plan. We'll just refer the plan, and the addition uh, this, that there was this can either be as shown on the plan, or be uh, it, it would be. Let's see. So it's 11 feet at the rear of the addition, 11.24. Um, so you go to 11 foot. Um, could be as close as 11. The addition could could be as close as 11 feet if they decide to make the addition square with the house rather than with the garage. Is I that, think that works, and that gives them a little more than five. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. I think. You I, I, I think we have that. All right. Uh, oh, and I just I I say this to everybody when we approve an in-law apartment, um, and clearly you, you design it for an in-law that if if the situation well, first if you sell the house and somebody comes in and wants to use it as an in-law, they need to come back to us and get that okay, uh, and they cannot use it for an unrelated person. And likewise, you cannot use it for an unrelated person. The approval is, is uh, for a member of the family. Sure. Okay, uh, so can I have a motion to the, that effect? I'll make the motion. Okay, motion by Mr. Curran, second by Mr. Andrews. All in favor? Okay, you're all set. Thank you all for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck with it. Mr. Lynch, can we keep this for the record? Okay, thank you. Uh, <laughs>
Have a good night. Thank you. Would you reference both plans in your write up? Let's see, I'm going to keep one for my to work on. No, we got one more. I don't know. We got another. I think they're going to be here. So is he going to invest in the now? I have unlimited. We absolutely have one unlimited seat. Well, you can't share that with trail. You can't share that with funds. He wanted me to. I'm like, so yeah. they're not going to go for it. They're going to have to run. I'm going to make them. Yes. Um, Sean, do you want my uh, copy of the newspaper to put in the records? Um, actually, I have a copy. Let me give that to. Uh, yeah, but my copy's better than yours. <laughs> so, but I have the original copy. What's the. Uh, I'm not sure which date. Does yours show the date? No. no. Yeah, I'm not sure which copy I tore this out. Well, it says July 20th. That's the longest first part. Yeah, well, that's what I have, but I don't have the. I don't have the newspaper date itself. But, I mean, I suppose it's conceivable, Wayne, that it was correct one week and incorrect the next, but probably not. I <laughs> You just need a bigger printer, Wayne. Yeah, exactly. Oh, it's not John. Okay. <laughs> 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 Okay, I'm going to open the uh, the hearing for case number 13, is it? Yeah. This is the continuation of the hearing for 199 South Avenue. We held the first session of the hearing on July 29th. And at that time, the uh, five members who were going to be voting on it were uh, myself, Mr. Andrews, Mr. Bloss, Mr. Curran, and uh, Robert Kimball. Mr. Kimball cannot be here tonight, but Mr. Keeman uh, was present for that meeting, so I'm designating him to be the fifth vote to, uh, to decide on this proposal. So, uh, I think with that being said, um, I'll uh, leave it to you to explain where, where we are. Yeah, uh, based on the last meeting, uh, the board had some input as far as some additional items. Uh, one, we show a proposed stockade fence uh, along the uh, Dunbar property. Uh, we extended the walkway uh, uh, down Linden Street to the entrance of the parking area. Uh, we um, decreased uh, one of the two bedrooms to a one bedroom unit, which gave us an, another additional parking spot uh, uh, for the retail. Uh, and we also uh, I also uh, designated the rear parking area. That one of, somebody brought it up that the residence, residential parking would be to the rear, uh, and that would be uh, residential in this area here, which is handicapped and being accessible, uh, would be for the retail. Uh, these spaces are. Uh, well, the, the van required an 11 foot, the rest of them are 10 by 20. These four are 10 by 20. We decreased these to uh, 9 by 20 along the back, which was residential parking. Actually, they're a little bit bigger, bigger than that, uh, they're like nine, almost nine and a half. Um, and I did that based on, I mean, I went and looked at like 
if we were able to park, park, park in the town parking lot, those spaces are nine by 18. The library is eight by 18 and eight by 16. Uh, and our town hall here is also nine by 18. Uh, so it's parking. Sometimes in other towns, they lie down to eight foot for compact. I, I haven't made a note that it's going to be for compact, but where it's just the residential parking, uh, it's not customers coming in and out all day. So we're asking f for those to be nine by 20. The backup space in this particular area it, uh, here is, uh, is roughly uh, 40 feet. So it's not like there's a problem getting into those spaces. Um, and I think that was most of the points that were brought up in the last meeting. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, I can just uh, briefly. Yes, go ahead, um, please. The only change, I mean, we've, we've all seen the graphics. Um, the only change that we made on the architectural side was for third floor to uh, previously two bedroom unit here is now being proposed as a one bedroom to reduce the parking requirement where we have um, a single two bedroom unit in the building now. Can you just go through the what's, so is that one bedroom going to be bigger than the other one bedrooms or the same as them? Uh, well, it looks like that one's 865. So, uh, no, actually we have one bedroom on the corner here that's kind of a premium unit that's 900. So okay. they're all relatively, you know, similar size. Um, um, I guess I'm trying to make sure that we don't have a situation with it, it, with a room that could be converted into a bedroom. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's open to the kitchen, so we converted that to a dining space, which we didn't really have in that nice bedroom. Um, so that, that would not have a wall um, at all to that room. <coughs> All right. All right. Um, I'll go to members of the board. I mean, I'm. Uh, I have to say, I'm uh, not keen on going with less than a ten foot width for any of the parking spaces. Even if that means we have one less parking space, so be it. But um, cars are not getting any smaller, and uh, and we. I think been pretty firm about not allowing uh, a reduction in width of parking spaces and for anything that's going in and out, which would be the case with the residences too. So, I mean, would want, if, if that first floor apartment is intended to be potentially for, you know, limited, either handicapped or limited mobility person, <clears throat> when the uh, what, what's the rules about that as far as uh, yeah. I mean should that be a handicapped space or at least at least one of the at least the space closest to that unit should be a residential space and Mr. Curran what's um, what do they need to provide for handicapped space for the commercial and there has to be one handicapped space on the property and it has to be van accessible but the unloading area is on this plan shows it as five and it's supposed to be eight. As far as whether they make a unit handicapped accessible, they can make it easily adapted for, for handicap in case somebody wants to rent it. It's not required in the code. Okay. Yeah, well, well, the handicap spaces, my width of my handicap space is 11 feet with a five. I could have two, I could do eight and eight, but when I use the van, I can go. 11 to 5. Is that new regulation? The van accessible is 8 feet. It's... A regular handicapped space is 5 feet. 5 feet wide. The unloading area and a handicap is 8. Yeah, well this is 11. No, 8 for the unloading. Right now you show 5 as an unloading area. Yeah. 5 feet is supposed to be 8. 
Oh, I just looked at the regs the other day, mass regs. Before I, I changed it. I changed my plan. I had it on there before. Did you? Yeah. Can you get back? <laughs> yeah, I can get, get well, back. Well, what's going to require that anyway? The first space is supposed to be handicapped. Van accessible. Mm -hmm. You know that, right? Um, so, yeah, that, if they make it easily adaptable for handicap on the first floor apartment, that'd be great. But I don't think it's required. Okay. All right. You mean the parking? No, the just interior. Mm -hmm. interior. And the, uh, the entrance to the interior on the first floor from the parking area, um, that would be... I mean, yes. Yeah. So, so, yeah, all, all so if somebody's, yeah. if the residential person, if the person who's living in that first floor apartment is using one of the other parking spaces that they've designated as for residences, they'll still be able to get to their apartment easily. So, well, like, it's, it's kind of a walkway. It's, the entrance is right here. It's yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. So, it's not very far. So, all right. Let me go to the members of the board then. I just wanted to raise that as an issue. Mr. Keeman? I have more questions. Okay, Mr. Andrews? Yeah, what's this garage here from the not the, the corner? That would be existing garage on the property. This garage here? No, this is right here. You got this marked in the garage. Well, that's the garage that's on the... Yeah, I, did, I have it dashed in. That's the garage that's on the site right now. All right, and that's going to... Be demoed. That's so. going to be gone, right? Yeah, yeah, and the house is somewhat dashed on here, too. Yeah, yeah but I mean, that, that garage is going to be taken away. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can, I'm not going to use that. I didn't want to apologize. Well, we, we might change it. Right? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> if you yeah. guys don't catch it, no. Okay, that's, that, that's all I have. Okay, Mr. Curran? Um, can we talk about the fence? Did we agree on the fence last meeting? I... Are we doing Mr. a six Dunbar, who was here, wanted a stockade fence? Yes, yeah, so you got to do a six foot stockade to his property. Yeah, I should. And then, is it a six foot down the other side? Yeah, it's already there, yeah. yeah. And that's going to be uh, maintained? Yeah. yeah. That will probably have to come out during construction, right? Yeah, usually. Um, yeah, that's all I have. Okay, Mr. Blas. I just think. If the first floor apartment is handicap accessible, wouldn't it be reasonable that the parking be handicapped as well for the resident on the first floor? So my understanding of how that works is I mean, you, we, we do accessible apartments in most of our buildings, at least one, it's one per 20. And then it's hard to know if they're actually going to be occupied by someone that needs the accommodation. So I, I've always kind of questioned it. And it's, it, you know, I think probably more often than not, those apartments end up with someone that doesn't need the accommodation. You don't want to limit the parking to have two accessible spaces if we don't know that there will actually be someone that needs that accessible <laughs> space. So I, my feeling is the best approach is that if somebody, say, needed that apartment that was able to rent it and they needed the accessibility, that they might still be assigned a regular residential space. Because I imagine the spaces in the project will be numbered so the residents have a space that they park in. That apartment would be the closest one to yeah. the to the entry door. Mm. Um, you know, and if they required a drop off of any sort, then they could use the accessible space when they were dropping off. Mm. But if you if you put an additional ADA space for that apartment, then you run into the problem of maybe 50% of the time it's not occupied by someone that needs right. it, and now we have an extra space right. that people can I understand park. that, but aren't we limiting the ability of a handicapped person to rent that apartment? So if there's a 50-50 chance the, person, the, the handicapped person is going to need a handicapped parking space, 
by not having a handicapped parking space for them, they're not going to be able to rent the apartment. So I say we should err on the side of of um, the, the handicapped person and and put it there. Now, Mr. Kern, are you saying that this resident could use the handicap? Absolutely. We can't say no to that. So if this is a handicapped spot, and more than likely any business that's here is going to be closed at nighttime, and the resident could park there, or even during the day when during normal business hours, it doesn't matter. It's all that's required is one. So could we make it a condition that the resident that the handicapped parking space made available uh, for the handy if the handicapped um, uh, renter requires it or something you, like you that? Let's say that the, the owner shall provide um, reasonable accommodations for anyone with accessibility issues. Right, because... Let them figure it out. Yeah, because the person who lives... When we're talking about in the, the, the wording for how we want the, fir the first floor apartment is it's not really handicapped accessible. It's, what is the wording for it? It's well, adapted. I mean, it's, yeah, I mean, uh, a barrier free, you know, <laughs> a lot yeah, of different. I mean, in, in other words, a lot of people will need, you know, rail lanes, mm -hmm. um, first floor unit, obviously, uh, will probably have a handicapped placard that they use in their car but don't necessarily need a, a van space. They're not right. necessarily in a wheelchair, but they need right. to be close to the building right. and so forth. So, um, But if that person does require... Yeah. Is it, is, is then they can use the one that's there. Then they, yeah. They, they, yeah. By, by, by yeah. wording but, this way... We don't have to worry about it. Okay. It kind of will take care of itself. I just want to make sure that someone who might be in a wheelchair isn't deny renting the place because of yeah, not being able to have a place to park. Grandin Park um, had the, all their handicap spots filled and there was a gentleman that needed a handicap spot and I just made a call and they fixed it. They just added another one temporary. I think since then they took it back out. But I think it would be the owner's responsibility to provide accommodations for over the rent. <laughs> so leave, leave this alone. That's supposed to be what well, they don't think Rob will figure that out. But, but if if the first floor tenant needed the handicapped space that they're showing here, then there isn't a handicapped space for the businesses. Is that a problem? There isn't 20, well, yeah, if the resident leaves and goes to work or something, there's going to be a space there. And if not? So I, I would say if it were mine and somebody wanted that needed accommodations, I would go to one of the spaces that's easier for them to get in and out. They don't have to have an unloading zone. It might be somebody with just a cane. But I think Dick's point is, what if it is somebody in a wheelchair yeah, who's taking be. advantage of the fact that this is the first They floor. should use that space. Yeah. Otherwise, you could even say that about the above units. I mean, we're all going to be handicapped at some point in our life. <laughs> so, so you can't just put them all as handicapped. Right, right. And it's only required to be one. Okay. But if... If so, if if we say they shall make a reasonable accommodation, and the accommodation is turning over the handicapped space to a resident, yep. that doesn't create a problem for them not having a handicapped space for the. No, I think it's patient. there, and, and they've got what's required. Okay. okay. <laughs> all right. All right. That's my work. That's all. Right. All right. Um, what do members of the board feel about the the issue of nine versus ten foot width uh, parking spaces? He's, what Carl has drawn up shows the six spaces at the rear as being nine feet. Don't will be right foot backwards. He could he could make those nine and a half feet if he reduces the depth of the others to nineteen. The ones on the right side, John. Okay. Go, go to nineteen feet on that in the depth. And okay. That to nine and a half feet depth. Because then he can go a little bit wider. Mm -hmm. Okay. But Mr. Garber, did you say it's already nine and a half? It's like around nine point three. If I increased it out to, I can increase it out to this, up to here, the black, this black line, yeah. and they're going to be at least yeah, nine and a half. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have a less of a problem with making the depth 
19 feet than I do with the width. <laughs> uh, yeah, there are some oversized trucks and all, but uh, if so, you assign those to them. Yeah. Well, you know, the, but, the 19 or 18, are, the, the depth doesn't really make much difference here. Yeah, it's, it's the width I'm concerned about. Um, what did you have in the original plan, Carl, as far as the number of spaces and how? Uh, well, I had five spaces there. Um, and, the, you know, the board was concerned with the retail. Yeah. Uh, so that gave me one more space. Then the bedroom gives me two more spaces than what we had in our original okay. presentation. So okay. that, I mean, that's the only reason I did it. And I, uh, and I can expand it out to the, in, out to the property line. One, two, three, four, five. So you have, you have six parking spaces next to the building, one of them being a handicapped space, right? Correct. Okay. Yeah, five retail and then one handicapped. Okay. So effectively six. It's essentially six. So it's six. Right. So because if, if one of the residences did use that space, then that would free up one of the other residential spaces for a business use. So... Um, I mean, I could. I know you were talking about the additional handicap, but if if I move this dumpster back to the back of the parking lot, this could be like a five foot aisle on that side, also. Yeah. If if in fact they needed it later. All right. All right. Um, I mean, I continue to have some concern about. Uh, I mean, I think this meets the requirements of the. But how, how much parking would you need for the commercial spaces? If we didn't have the provision about, if this were just a commercial space and lot, and we didn't have the provision in the bylaw about being able to use other public spaces, what would you be required to have for this square footage of so one every three hundred square feet? One every, every one every three hundred, I believe. Yeah. And how much? What's the square footage of the commercial space? Uh, of course, I didn't tumble it. I can look at it nine, seven. Uh, it, you need uh, three there, two there. Uh, you need s s seven. Oh, say enough. Maybe. maybe uh, it's about a can of 2,200. 2,200. Uh, probably eight. Um, all right. So you're not, all right. You're not that far off then. No. Okay. Um, and, you know, I did take a look. I mean, people could park on Linden Street and, 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 uh, yeah, I mean, I went up. down after our meeting, I went down and looked at some of those streets. So we're kind of parked on, you know, across, uh, across the street from us. There was quite a few. Yeah. Um, and even down and beyond, house, you know, beyond Mr. Dunbar's house. I mean, the rest of the street was loaded. So I wouldn't even, yeah, yeah. It's, that. it's not, it's not a very narrow street and doesn't get too much traffic. There's a lot of motorcycles parked there for me. <laughs> okay. um, you don't? Yeah. Um, just so you know, you, the 11 foot is required for a handicapped space. It's only going to be 8. So you can change that to 8 and 8. 8 and 8, yep. Okay. All right, so why don't you make, yeah. Yeah, make yeah. that change? Yeah. Um, all right, so then uh, I'll, I'll go out to the public in a moment just to kind of sum up where we're at. Um, what's being proposed is it just site plan review for the for the building. It doesn't need a special permit. It would need a variance for the width and depth of the parking spaces. And our understanding is the six spaces shown at the real lot would be at least nine and a half feet wide by twenty, while the four spaces shown. Uh, on the uh, east side, the side next to the Chinese restaurant property. Westley West side, thank yeah. you, thank you. Westley side um, would be 10 feet wide, but could be reduced to 19 feet in depth. Is that what we've okay. come to? Um, and then we would have a condition that uh, if the first floor tenant needed a handicapped space, the uh, there would be accommodation of that. Let's just put it that a, way. I think. What do you call that? A, not just a, handi a handicapped space that requires a loading zone? 
Right, a van, a van, van accessible, van, van usable, van accessible. Well, that would, yeah, it would be an eight-foot striped area. Right. If if they need it, the uh, the owner will make that available. Um, and I think we mentioned last time we're not, although three retail units are shown, we're not. Our decisions not conditioned on it being three units that 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 space can be used as as sees fit over time. Um, okay, let me go out to members of the public. Uh, comments and questions from members of the public? Anything? Yes, Mr. Yeah, Dunbar. Mr. Dunbar. My name is Mr. Dunbar. Yep. I was just concerned about the fence. That's great. They're going to put the fence up. They're going to take the, the existing fence down, chain link fence down. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and um, the trees are going. All the trees are going to be the, the trees are going to be stripped out. We discussed that at the last meeting. Yeah, they're going to. Yeah, we're going to do a new landscaping area. Isn't it? I mean, there may be a few that would be left. I mean, this. Uh, well, at one spot is it's is eight foot of existing. This is the, there's four trees on that side of the property next to my house. You like them or you don't like them? I don't like them. <laughs> <laughs> that that makes, they're coming down. They're coming down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we are good. Okay. Um, no parking. No parking on this side. The street sides wouldn't be bad. Well, well that's you. that's up to the police. You know, that's another issue. Yeah. I mean, and I, you know, I am concerned about people uh, going people to the businesses. Yeah, yeah, people are parking on the outside of the street that shouldn't even be there. Okay. Don't want to get any details, but yeah, okay. understood. Um, but I will, you know, again by. The reduction in the number of bedrooms and some changes to the parking arrangement. There's at least some spaces there for no, for, I'm, for the. I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy. Okay. Okay. Let me ask. He, um, Mr. Dunn, I was going to ask this about the fence. So, the stockade fence along his property. That's going to be a new fence. Correct. And then there's an existing fence between your property and the Chinese restaurant property. Um, I didn't look to see what kind of condition that's in, but why not put a new fence there? You're going to have to take it down anyway for the construction, right? And it'll get destroyed. Yeah, probably. <laughs> probably will. So we're bringing up there's a lot of trees there too. So we could just you know, put in a decision to maintain a six foot stockade fence. Yeah, maintain a six foot stockade fence along both uh, both lots. Mm -hmm. um, Okay, anything else from anyone else? Of course, what I would really have loved to see was some proposal that combined this property and the Chinese restaurant property. The sale sign is going. It, it's gone, you said? Oh, it's yes, I did. It yeah. was gone Thursday. Hmm. You know what I thought? I was thinking the whole time. This <laughs> last Thursday. Yeah, it's too bad that it can't all be worked yeah, together because then you'd have no... Yeah, you could work out the parking, yeah. you could have a... A bigger building and whatnot. Did it sell? I have no idea, but the sign's going from the window. Hmm. I think it's still under agreement. I don't think it's sold yet. Oh, really? yeah. I know Steve Egan told me a month ago it was under agreement. So huh. when I was, he knew, when he found out I was doing this project, he said the same thing, but he said, <laughs> I think they just sold it. You know? uh -huh. Okay. Uh, okay. I, I, would say, I, w I wish anyone well who you know can do something with that property, but it just seemed like this might be the time for something to happen to that property. Um, all right. I don't think we have anything further. Any, anything further from members of the board? Okay. So I'll close the public hearing. So it's for the uh, site plan approval uh, for the plan as shown to us. Um, with the changes to the plan being, uh, and, well, in a variance for the parking spaces, as I stated, so that would change on the plan. And the van space could be eight and eight rather than 11 and five as shown on the plan. And with the condition that if a first floor residential tenant uh, needs the use of a van accessible uh, parking space, the owner will make an accommodation of that. 
Anything else? The parking space in the back, the nine and a half. Right, so that the variance would be the parking spaces shown uh, ab abutting the Dunbar property could be uh, down to nine and a half feet wide and the parking spaces to the on the westerly side of the property, the four residential parking spaces could be reduced in depth to 19 feet. Um, should we say 18 feet just to make it is this fine? Yeah, let's say eight, so we reduce it to what? 18 feet in depth for those if four. If I reduce it to 18, I could probably have 10 footers in my back. I don't have the nine and a half. But Just make it at least nine, nine and a half feet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah probably, you know, probably, so be probably better to have 19 feet depth nowadays. But yeah. Um, I'm just trying to make it so that, again, the building inspector doesn't look at what you're proposing to say. It doesn't meet the site plan. Um, oh, and stock, new stockade fence uh, along this, uh, the Dunbar property and a six-foot stockade fence and likewise along the western boundary. Did we talk about lighting or we're all happy with that? Uh, what we didn't really talk about what thank you mr dunder yeah i mean i'm showing a light you know in the corner of this parking lot here which would be mainly for the uh parking lot under there's lighting underneath the, the covered walkway for um, that do we need to say anything about the lighting then well yeah i think if you look at it it might be dark on the back um, but you don't want to interfere with the Dunbar. Problem. Exactly. Yeah. But you don't want it. That's what it keeps going. Yeah, you don't want it. <laughs> you don't want the light that's uh, well, I'm just pointing right here shining this way. You right. want to shine down. Yeah. down. Any light? Any lights in the parking lot that just shine downward? Does that cover it? Well, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I do a note on there about you not know, becoming. Yeah, yeah. Like that. Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. So okay, yeah, so there's a note on the plan, note number six. Six, a shall. So at least another light in the parking area in the back. Um, I don't know if that would have. I don't think it would bother him. I don't think so either. Have you seen the light? Actually, it might be better just to put one in the back and have it kind of shine towards the back of this building. Yeah. But, in other words, is that even important? Yeah, I, I don't want to, I assume if, you're, if, if you need it, you're going to put it in there, and as long as it's not going to affect Mr. Dunbar's property. You're going to have lights with the jewels sloping up the neighborhood. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is true. Yeah. There's, okay. I think we're good. Okay. All right. Can I uh, have a motion to that effect? So move with uh, conditions and site okay. plan approval. Okay. Motion by Mr. Blaws. Is there a second? No second. Second by Mr. Andrews. Any further discussion? All right. All in favor? 5 0. Oh. Good luck with it. Actually, has anybody noticed the light at the temple? The one in the fire station? Oh, that's too small. It, it's, it's going straight this way. Yeah. So it's not going to happen. If your head is home, you're blind. Yeah. yeah, that needs to be. Every, 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 every week when we leave. Yeah. 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 Somebody had to go to Somebody had to go to the fire station. No, that was in the building. That's just well. He never comes, so I'll have to help him. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we got. Yes, we're still in open session. We've still got minutes and reorganization to do, and something else I'll bring up. I wanted to keep me going. You want to go? Good night, gentlemen. Good night, Carl. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, minutes. Days, hours. We have uh, case number 12, which was the uh, second hearing on 2933 Perry Avenue.
2933 Perry Avenue. Motion by Mr. Andrews to approve. Uh, and let's see. Uh, and Mr. Keenan, you were not sitting on the case. So, second, anyone? I'll second. Second by Mr. Blas. All in favor? Four rows. So that's Mr. Cohen, Mr. Andrews, Mr. Blas, and myself. Case number 13, uh, which was the first hearing on 199 South Avenue. Motion to approve. Motion to approve by Mr. Curran. Is there a second? Second. By Mr. Andrews. All in favor? Four rows. Same people. Uh, case number 14, which was the denial on 129 Washington Street for the uh, pork chop lot. Move, sir. Okay. Motion by Mr. Blas to approve. Second. Second by Mr. Curran. All in favor? Four rows. And the general minutes for that meeting. Um, and I guess Mr. Mr. Keener can sit on this one. Motion to approve. By Mr. Andrews. Second. Second by Mr. Curran. All in favor? So make that one 5 0. Okay. Um, we have a couple of other matters. One is reorganization. So I. Uh, was in touch with the selectman's office, and the expectation is that at their August 20th meeting, Mr. Keeman will be appointed to the full membership, and uh, there's an applicant, I'm forgetting now his, his last name is Jones, I forget his first name, who won't want to be on the town board. What's his last name? Jones, and I Jones? just I forget his first name. I looked at his resume, he had like a business background and so forth, and he was interested in his EBA. Somebody, so I, somebody to apply for? Yeah, for an alternate position. So I said he'd be fine, so I expect him to be appointed. So that'll get us up to seven at that point. We'll still be one short on an alternate, but at least we'll be in a little bit better shape. Um, so having said that, I I think we could still reorganize if people are of mind to do so. Mr. Uh, Keeman could not vote in it, but we got four of us here. We could get it done. Uh, we need a volunteer for uh, a clerk. Excuse me? Or a secretary or whatever that is. Uh, would Mr. Curran be willing to be the clerk? Sure. Yeah, so I'm willing to be stay as vice as chairman, and Mr. Blas as vice chairman. I'm... I haven't had to do anything. Well, because I schedule the meetings to fit my schedule. And Mr. <laughs> Cummings is clerk. So if that's okay with people, I'll entertain a motion to elect that slate. Make, make a motion to select those people for those positions. Okay, motion by Mr. Andrews. Second. One of you, Mr. Blas, can second it. Uh, all in favor? Four out. So we're done on that. We Our next meeting will be September 23rd. We have... Uh, we have one case. What, what is, is that an in law, an addition, or something? Yeah, 60 Quartel Ave. Yeah, 60 Quartel Ave, an in law at 7. Then at 7.30, we have the middle school for uh, site plan approval. And I don't know if there's anything else needed on that. When did uh, you say that would be? September 23rd. 23rd. So we won't meet now. We don't have yeah, to. I'm going to be away for a couple of weeks in September, so uh, just put it off. And then the. We don't have anything before that? Nope, we don't have any other cases other than the two. We'll have two new cases that night, but we're in time. They just came in recently. But so. we'll, we'll get some um, drawings before. Yeah, I thought uh, we think there's a box of these. There is a box. Michael bore them down. But I asked Rob, uh, who couldn't be here tonight, I said, I think there's a box in your office. Can you bring it in here? And he said, I've only got one copy, so he brought that one over. So I don't, I, my intention was to pass them out to you. Sure. If anybody wants the big set, you what, can take that one. What, what, what are they coming before us for? <laughs> Site plan approval, 
it might also take they want to build a new school. They, it might also take a determination because it's in a residential zone. So So we could shoot it down. We can measure it down. Excuse me? That we can't we can't we can't regulate it. Because so it's a school. Reasonable things. It's a school. That's so true. It's, it's a, so anyway, it may, it may just be site plan, like we like when we had the police station, DPW. It's a municipal building, but it still needs. They're already at sixty percent design. There's yeah. kind of no turning back. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. We'll we'll see how controversial it is. The other thing I wanted to bring up to the board, I don't, I won't, don't want to discuss it much tonight because it's not on the agenda, but to make everyone aware, the state a couple of weeks ago approved what you might have seen in the news as the housing bond bill. A lot of it was money for housing. But they put in there a bunch of provisions that modify 48, including most, I mean, some, a couple of them don't concern us as much. One is uh, making a couple of provisions, making it more difficult for an abutter to appeal an approval of a decision. So that's not our problem. That's the, you know, other people's problem. But basically, again, to try to stop appeals that hold up projects. Mm -hmm. But the thing they did that does concern us is they are allowing what are called accessory dwelling units by right and not limited to in law. So it basically overrides what we've been doing for <laughs> however many years. Um, Basically, correct me if I'm wrong, John. It's it's um, they can become rentals. They're they're yeah, and they're, it doesn't have to be owner occupied. It's essentially making every single family property a two family property. Um, but there is some provision in there that towns can regulate this, that, and the other thing, including requiring site plan approval. So that um, and it doesn't take. It's, they put a six-month delay on that provision, so it doesn't take effect until February. So I sent an email to Adam Somerville today and proposed having a joint meeting of the planning board and zoning board on Tuesday, September 24th, the day after our zoning board meeting, to sit down, and because I'm prepared to sit down and draft a zoning amendment that takes advantage of anything the state has allowed us to do. And again, I'll go into more detail on that. There are some ways we can control some aspects of it. Um, so, and it's by, did I say it's by right or not by special permit? <laughs> but in your question, yeah, go ahead. Site plan. So there is site, there will be site plan requirements. If we impose it, not under the state. Right now it's allowed by right. So the right, I mean, if, if it was February, the building inspector could issue a permit. That's right. Does it have to be on the second floor? No, it could be a freestanding building. They could build. It could be an addition. So, they, if the building code allowed tiny houses, that's what people yeah, would be doing. Yeah. But the building code isn't up on that yet. Yeah. John, did you say a joint meeting with the planning board? That's what I'm going to suggest because but if, they, if they, to talk they, about drafting a bylaw, we're going to have to go to town but, meeting but, next but, spring. But their, their, I can't think of the word I want. Their whole thing for for uh, existing. Has to do with uh, uh, doesn't doesn't have to do with zoning. No, but but they're the ones who you know with the MBTA they they drafted and presented the bylaw on MBTA communities. So I'm just thinking they should any bylaw amendment has to go to the planning board for hearing. We might as well have them involved. You know, even if we're the ones who drafted, but they may be happy to draft it too. So I just want to work together with them on drafting um, um, the bylaw. The estate bylaw. So I should have something by then. Right. Oh, okay, okay. So and if we, as long as we, even even though this new thing would go into effect in February and town meeting isn't until May, if we if the, if we draft a bylaw and advertise it for a public hearing before February, that freezes, that, that means that anybody who wants to try to jump in with the proposal is subject to the new bylaw. So, get, so there's a way to, again, we can't block this entirely. A couple of things I thought of was, um, again, site plan approval, which even if it's not 
a great deal of approval, at least requires a public hearing, so at least the abutters will know about this. Otherwise, the abutters will never know. You just go in and get your building permit. Um, I also want to make it uh, that if they have an accessory, a, a building that's used for one of these units has to meet the same setback requirements as it's the main house. Wrong. Right. Which is going to eliminate about 70%? Right. Or, yes. you know, or make, okay. them, make them put it in the house. You know, well, they'll so put it in addition to the house. So, um, That's going to be a big one. That'll stop about three Yeah, years. Yeah, because otherwise, you know, it shouldn't be like a garage or a shed if it's going to be a residence. Well, that's what I was going to ask. Yeah. Right. Well, it, it eliminates all the whole memorial, all that area. Yeah. Um, so, and, and the other thing would be to specify, make it clear that since so many of our the properties we're talking about are non-conforming properties one way or another, that if you put an accessory, one of these ADUs, accessory dwelling units, on a non-conforming lot, or if the house is non-conforming, you know, that it's, it requires a determination from the board, which again no, gives us... No less conforming. Yeah, yeah well, we, at least we no get to say more, whether it's substantially no more, more detrimental than they So that gives us a degree of control. Which isn't clear in the state. Anything state law. you put in for a new bylaw is going to be super critical to by the criticized by the attorney general, right? Not necessarily, because the the state the yes. statute says it phrases it like um, agriculture and some other things. So you can have reasonable regulations as long as you don't prevent it. You can't prohibit it, but you can have some reasonable regulations as to bulk and height and that kind of stuff. So. No, and, and I would want to run the bylaw by the attorney general before we adopt it, which they're they're happy to do. Yeah. So, yeah. so anyway, if you get working on it, we'll. Um, oh, and they can have more than one ADU except the second unit, and any more that's by special permit. But the first one's by right. So. Well, it's a big change. That's a big change. Well, Baker City I, again, it's for you know for towns that don't have it already. You could say, well, about time they did. But we've had something that's worked pretty well, I think. And now that's just so. It doesn't right. talk about existing. No, it doesn't say anything about existing <laughs> units. So all these people that have in-laws would probably just come back here for a special permit. And this board would likely grant. Well, I mean, for us, in theory, they don't need. They may not, depending on where the unit is, they may not even need to come to us for a special. Well, say, say they have a second unit within a house, mm -hmm. That's and we didn't, and we didn't have to give any zoning relief on it of any sort. We just gave the special permit. I think they can. Probably just go ahead and rent it out. Yeah, that's my house. I have a beautiful yeah. in-law yeah. apartment. I mean, she's going to be there long after I'm gone. Yeah, yeah there's no requirement in there that the, about separate utilities or any of that business. So. And he never got permission yeah. to have an in-law. You said that. <laughs> <laughs> you said I couldn't get my mind to the front because I wasn't so, married to her. Anyway, that's so to give you the... That's that would the, mean it's a, it would be taxed as a two-family then. Mine already is. Yeah, I think uh, yeah, I think some already are. Um, anyway, that's what's on the horizon, and uh, so uh, it, and if when Adam gets back to me, if that if, if that date doesn't work, we'll make it in October sometime. But I do want to get rolling on it. Um, but if if we are going to have that meeting, we'll I'll send out an email to you to let um, you know. You may want to consider putting the school upstairs that right here. Yeah, yeah, I've had the Really? You think this going to be? Well, there's going to be quite a production. But the whole committee will be there. Oh, okay. Have you put anything in yet to the newspapers? No, not yet. All right. Could you see if we can get the upstairs room? And if so, let's both, we'll schedule both hearings upstairs okay. then. I mean, there's a project manager, there's okay. architects, there's. They're going to they're gonna want to show us videos and. <laughs> I think they're going to want to do a, yeah, a demonstration, yeah. but... Yeah, okay, um, okay, good, thank, thank, no, look, we'll, we'll, if we can get upstairs, that's what we'll do. This is too proud. I've yeah. already got the first case all done. Well, well I, I mean, if we, if we have to, we could hold the first case here. Okay, and then go up. But if, if, if you, 
I did it over you, the weekend. Oh, you got all the letters. Okay. All right. So the seat. first case will probably be down here, and then we'll run upstairs for the second case. Uh, motion, motion to adjourn. Uh, well, okay. I'll, I think I need your signature. I got to order a stamp. Mine? Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, the clerk. Okay. Uh, motion to adjourn was by Mr. Andrews. Please. Second. Thank you. Anywhere. Second by Mr. Blaws. All in favor? 5-0. We are adjourned.